In this Tyrannus video, we're going to talk about using the analog telemetry port on things like the D4R2 receivers to measure voltage on your craft. Now, there are two videos we've already done around telemetry for the Tyrannus. This one here is actually talking about where you can set it up. It covers the introduction, what's the difference between the analog port and the smart ports that are on the X series of receivers. And there's this video here that then talks about how to set up a channel to output the RSSI value into flight boards like in NASI32 that can then display it on an on-screen display. Now, those all require lots of different bits and pieces and other technology to work. The cool thing about this is that you can attach this setup to any model that you fancy and it will then be able to send you back the main battery voltage. Normally in these little receivers there are two analog telemetry ports. A1 is normally internally connected so that it shows you the receiver voltage that's usually between 5 or 6 volts and AD2 is normally presented at the side at a pin. So here on the back of this D4R2 is receive, transmit, AD2 and ground. And AD2 and ground are what we're going to use to actually measure the main battery voltage. The little challenge that we have is this receiver will only accept 0 to 3.3 volts as a maximum. And if we're going to try and plug this into a 3 or 4S LiPo battery that has either 12 or 16 volts, that's going to be a bit of a problem. And that's where this little cute board comes in. This board, I actually got it from Hobby King. It's actually got FDDSV1 written on it, but it's actually called an FBVS01. I'll put a link to it in the description. On the right hand side, you can see it can connect to a 1S, 2S or 3S LiPo. The 3S will actually do a little bit more as well. And what it does is use a very simple resistor bridge to reduce the battery voltage down to a level that we can plug into that analog port that we've just had a look at. The manual for this little thing tells us what the resistor bridge is doing. And the manual talks about the fact that the recommended voltage options and the maximum LiPo battery count, and then it also gives us a battery voltage division ratio. Now that all seems really complicated and a bit tricky to follow. Let me explain what that all means because once you understand it, it's actually pretty straightforward. So here in this little picture, we have our D4R2 on the left hand side with a pin coming out of the AD2 line that's expecting to read a voltage between 0 and 3.3 volts maximum. And on the right hand side, we have a great whacking LiPo battery that can be, let's say it's a 3S battery and has 12.4 volts when it's fully charged. Now, to be able to connect the 12.4 volts to the 3.3 volts in a way that's going to be useful, we have to divide that voltage in a way where it will be less than 3.3. So what we do is we can divide it by 4, which means that if we divide 12.4 by 4, we get 3.1 volts. And then we can put that 3.1 volts into the AD2 port on the D4R2. That's fine, that means that now we're not putting too much voltage in, and that is all the little voltage divider is doing that we've just looked at. It's taking that input voltage from the battery and dropping it down to a level that the AD2 port can understand. What we then have to do is then change what the Tyrannus is set up as. So the Tyrannus radio doesn't know what voltage dividers we're using. There's no way for the little device to tell the receiver how much it's dropping the voltage by. So it doesn't know if that 3.1 volts is half of the battery voltage, a quarter of the battery voltage, or a sixth of the battery voltage. So we have to then set in the Tyrannus radio, tell the Tyrannus what that voltage divider is. So there's something called a range setting, which we'll look at in a second. So we're going to connect this up to AD2 on the receiver, and then on the Tyrannus, we'll have to set a range voltage. Now the range voltage is just our way of telling the Tyrannus radio how many times the voltage has been divided. And the way it works is that if we had the example that we had before where the voltage is divided by 4, then all we do is we multiply 4 by 3.3 volts and that gives us 13.2 volts. So 13.2 volts is the range value that we put into the radio so it works. Now it just so happens that that kind of works for a 4S battery because 3.2 volts isn't too far away from 12.4, kind of makes sense. 
But if we look at other examples, so if we had a divider of 3, we'd actually put in 9.9 .9 volts. If we had a divider of 4, we'd put in 13.2 volts, as we've talked about. If we had a divider of 6, which is actually what is on this voltage divider here that we're using in the video, we actually need a voltage of 19.8 volts for the Tyrannus to understand the signal properly. So we're actually going to have to say the range is 19.8 volts for it to understand what we've actually done is used a 6 to 1 voltage divider at the far end. So that voltage that we're talking about, the 19.8 volts or the 33 volts if you built your own voltage divider of 10, is actually also the maximum voltage that you can measure. So you can see here that if you really wanted to, you could actually have a battery up to 33 volts if you built your own little divider that divided it by 10. So connection is really, really straightforward. All we have to do is on one end, we have to plug it into the LiPo battery, and on the other end, we have to plug it into the D4R2. So what I've done with mine is I've just installed a very simple balance tap on one end, and on the other end, I'm actually going to use a little pin set so that I can plug it into the ground and also into the AD2 connector at the side of the D4R2. So let me do that quickly, we'll come back and have a look. So here we have it all set up. So uh, we have our balance tap on the right hand side that's going to plug into a 3S battery. That's going to then drop the voltage to a sixth of what it was. And that is going to then come out into the red and black wires, which just happen to be the one here. You'll probably find that it's a white wire on the cable that you have. This just happens to be another cable that has the right connectors on it. And on the back here you can see that the red wire is going into AD2 and the black wire is ground. So now we have this all set, I can just plug this into the battery and then we'll power on the Tyrannus and then we'll set the range value up on the radio and we should be good. And again, don't forget, we're actually going to be setting the range value of 19.8 volts because we're using a 6 to 1 voltage divider, which is what the manual says this thing is set up by default. So here we have it all plugged in. We have our little voltage divider plugged into the balance tap of the battery. In reality though, this could be plugged into anything where the main battery voltage is presented. So it could be the power distribution board or anywhere where the battery voltage is found on the craft. I've just plugged it into the balance port here just for simplicity. Now we've got it all connected. What we need to do though is just before we jump on the Tyrannus is just see what the actual voltage is that we're going to be trying to match. So um, let me just put the probes onto the exposed contacts. So the actual voltage that we're trying to match is 11.22 volts. So 11.22 volts is what we need. So let's jump on the Tyrannus and set that up. So we need to go into the telemetry screen, so we're going to press mode and then go and press page in a long press and there is the first bits and pieces. Now the A1 range as we talked about, A1 range is for the internal battery voltage that's being supplied to the receiver, that's usually between 5 and 6 volts. We could measure it while we were here and actually change that, but the one we're interested in is A2. We're going to change A2's battery voltage to be a different range so that we get the actual reading here. So we're going to change it, we're going to increase it. Okay, so with mine on 19.8 volts, it's actually reading 11.18 volts. If I increase that to 19.9, it's slightly over. Now, you get it as close as you possibly can, and then what you can do is go down into the offset and actually change the offset either way to increase it or decrease it. I would say that 11.23 volts having 0 0.01 volt out is acceptable. So now I have the main battery voltage. If I wanted to display that of course in the display just like we did with the main telemetry screens I could go back into telemetry, go down into the displays and on screen one I could tell it that I want 
A2. There we go. And if I come out of that, if I press and hold the page button, there's my telemetry screen, and there is my flight battery voltage on the display. So it's really nice, easy way with a very cheap and easy little bit of kit that's less than a couple of quid to actually monitor any battery voltage that is on the craft. So long as you have a voltage divider that will get it below 3.3 volts, you will be able to get it to read on the screen. So hopefully for those of you that are looking to do this but are using models like a Bixler or Flying Wing that don't have a flight controller installed, this is a very simple, cheap and easy way to get your battery voltage back down onto your Tyrannus. Thank you for taking the time to watch that video. There are lots of other videos on the channel and they're carefully ordered into playlists. So you may find that there are other videos on this same subject that you can go and watch. So I would recommend going into the playlist area of Painless360 YouTube channel and looking around and seeing what there is. You never know what you might find. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe and happy flying.